Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to talk about a nightmare scenario uh, for us interventionalists, uh, being unable to engage the coronary in a STEMI. Um, this happened to me recently, and um, we'll talk about what uh, I ended up doing. Uh, the patient is a previously healthy 45-year-old uh, man uh, who presented to us with an inferior STEMI after playing basketball. Um, I used a five French tiger catheter to engage the left coronary system first, and there was just minimal plaque. Uh, the patient had a fairly short ascending aorta, and the tiger catheter uh, kept popping out. And here you see me trying to re-engage, and by chance, uh, the catheter popped into the RCA, uh, which was clearly anomalous and was arising close uh, to the ostium of the left main. And so at this point, I thought that I was pretty lucky. Uh, if the tiger had not just popped into the RCA, I would have wasted a lot of time um, looking for it and wondering whether there was a flush occlusion. So now, um, since I knew where the RCA was, it was just a matter of finding the right guide uh, to engage it. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna be uh, too big of a deal. Um, to engage anomalous RCAs from the left, typically the AL catheters uh, work uh, pretty reliably. If not, uh, then the left-sided catheters such as the EBUs or the JLs uh, work well. Um, for very high arising RCAs, LCBs, RCBs, or IM catheters uh, sometimes work. And for low rising RCAs, you can try an MPA catheter. And finally, if you can't engage, but you can get close, um, you can always air mail a hydrophilic wire into the RCA and then use a guide liner to engage. So I thought uh, I had a lot of options. Uh, but um, my luck uh, ran out. Uh, I went through our guide catheter selection one by one and I could not get anything uh, to engage. Uh, the AL1 uh, got the closest, uh, which is what you see here, but nowhere close enough uh, for uh, air mailing a wire. Uh, the EBUs and the JLs didn't work, the IM and the MPA didn't work. I tried a JR4 and that did not work either. Um, so uh, what do I do now? Uh, the patient was having a STEMI and uh, time is uh, muscle. So the, the obvious thing would be to try a tiger guide uh, since we popped in earlier with the five French uh, tiger diagnostic. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we did not have a tiger guide in a cath lab. Uh, we didn't have a tiger, uh, a six French diagnostic tiger either. Uh, as I discussed in another video, it would have been possible to do actually straightforward PCIs uh, via a six French a diagnostic catheter. And so we only had a five French uh, diagnostic catheter. So my plan was to re-engage with the five French tiger, and this took a little doing, uh, but you see the uh, tiger uh, engaging here. I would then wire the RCA uh, via the five French tiger, and then swap out the tiger to a guide catheter over the coronary wire. What's the uh, best way of doing this? Well, I strongly suggest using a slippery wire. Uh, backup from the five French tiger is tenuous at best and the friction from a workhorse wire uh, crossing the occlusion will more than likely uh, kick out the catheter. So I decided to use a hydrophilic pilot 50 wire and thankfully it crossed the lesion and passed well into the PDA very smoothly. So next, the more tricky part. I had to exchange the five French tiger catheter to a guide catheter over the pilot 50 wire without causing the pilot 50 wire to fall out of the RCA. So a, a few tips uh, to do this. Uh, the problem is that a coronary wire is often not stiff enough uh, to keep your catheter straight. So as you're sliding the catheter over your wire in the aorta, the catheter can uh, reform its shape and, and pull your wire out of the coronary. And for whatever reason, backing out the old catheter is usually okay, but you'll run into this problem when you're advancing your new catheter back in. So your goal should be to stiffen up the rail uh, to keep your catheter as straight as possible. Um, the easiest way to do this uh, is to use a buddy wire, uh, either in the coronary next to your first wire, or if you don't have enough support to wire your coronary with a stiff wire, then just place the buddy wire in the aorta. You could actually also use an 018 wire in the aorta as your buddy. Um, the two wires together uh, usually provide enough body to keep your catheter straight enough to back it out. 
Um, for advancing the new guide catheter, I will usually lead with a balloon. In other words, advance a balloon over the wire ahead of the catheter and then follow with your new catheter over the balloon shaft. The balloon shaft in combination with the coronary wire and the buddy wire will usually provide enough uh, body uh, to act uh, as a rail and keep the catheter straight. Now, if you can actually get the balloon all the way into the coronary artery, then you're golden because you could then inflate the balloon uh, in the coronary artery, and this will usually provide more than enough support uh, to uh, advance and even deep seat your guide in the coronary. All right, so here we go. Um, first, I advance a BHW wire as a buddy wire. I tried to get it to cross into the RCA, but it immediately kicked back my tiger catheter. So I left the BHW wire in the aorta and over both the Pilot 50 wire in the coronary and the BHW wire in the aorta, I was able to back out my Tiger catheter. The Pilot 50 wire stayed in the RCA and uh, did not move. Next, um, I advanced a, a six French MPA guide over the, PHW and pilot, uh, over the BHW and pilot with an uninflated 2O by 15 millimeter balloon riding uh, on the pilot in front of the guide. Now, um, I specifically chose an MPA guide because it was already fairly straight. So just in case the BHW plus pilot plus balloon shaft did not provide enough body, the MPA was not going to form a bend like an EBU or an AL uh, once it reached uh, the SNE aorta. And that band could pull out my coronary wire from the RCA. And so here you see the tip of the MPA guide successfully advancing to, uh, to the uh, ascending aorta over the Pilot 50 with the BHW wire um, and the uh, 2015 uh, millimeter balloon uh, ahead of it. So now I was finally able to inflate the balloon uh, at the occlusion. Uh, we actually met door to balloon time, 72 minutes, which I thought was actually pretty remarkable uh, after all of the struggle. Really more a testament for how fast the staff was able to get the patient up to the cath lab. Uh, with the balloon inflated, I thought I could get the MPA guy to actually engage the RCA, but no luck. Even with the balloon inflated, the MPA guide could not uh, cannulate the RCA. So we uh, needed a guideliner. So how would you advance a guideliner over a coronary wire when you're not actually engaged and when your guide was up in the ascending aorta? Well, this is basically the same problem that we just faced, advancing a guide catheter over the coronary wire. I could, of course, just advance the guideliner over just the Pilot uh, 50 wire. The guideliner is more flexible and tracks better than a guide catheter, and this often will work but I did not want to risk it here. I didn't want to risk kicking out the wire here and having to start all over again. I could also do exactly what I did with the guide catheter, uh, that is advance the guideliner over a pilot and a, um, a buddy wire. I could try to exchange the pilot to a wiggle wire or another supportive wire using a microcatheter and then, and then advance the guideliner over that new stiffer wire. But um, what I ended up doing was to advance the guideliner over the pilot wire and an uninflated balloon. You see that here. This has the advantage of giving you the option to inflate the balloon in the coronary, which would then anchor your guide in place and which would then give you plenty of support to pull your guide liner in. And after doing that, we were finally engaged. And here you see a picture of the RCA with the guide liner deep seated in the proximal RCA. And with good engagement, uh, the rest of the intervention was uh, very easy. And here is the uh, final angiographic result, which we thought was quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient did well. Uh, his echo showed uh, mild inferior hypokinesis, but normal ejection fraction. And he went home um, after an uneventful hospital stay. All right, take home messages. Um, engaging an anomalous RCA is usually quite difficult and even more challenging in the STEMI. And we went over different guide catheters that often work. In our case, um, no guide catheter actually worked and we had to use a diagnostic catheter. Uh, for tenuous engagements with a diagnostic catheter, uh, we uh, discuss wiring with a hydrophilic wire. We discuss techniques to stiffen up your rail to exchange your diagnostic catheter. Uh, to a guide catheter over your coronary wire. We talked about the use of buddy wires in the coronary or in the aorta, and we discussed the use of uh, leading balloons.
Um, these techniques uh, can also be used to advance a guideliner into the coronary if you're still not able to engage uh, with your guide. Thank you for watching.